The Secret of Shambhala by James Redfield, Chapter 7, Entering Shambhala. The main character awakes in Shambhala. He is greeted by a six-foot-six woman named Ani, approximately 40 years of age, who has a partially luminous face, and she offers him a soup that consisted of tomatoes, onions, and broccoli. He mentions his taste senses were all enhanced. He said the house didn't seem to have a roof or outside walls, and he could see the sky and tree branches from within the house, meaning the whole thing was transparent and like glass. Ani explains that they are in the rings of Shambhala, and that farther to the north are the holy temples. She mentions the gateway can enter the rings at other places as well. How the walls and the doors work. They appear like glass, but they are not. They're energy fields that look just like glass, but you can't break it. They are partially electronic, but people participate mentally to activate them. You just walk through them by visualizing the force field opening for you, and just intending it to open opens it. Just see it opening in your mind, and then you walk through. And when you walk through, it looks like a distortion in the space, like heat rays you see on the highway in the sun. And people can just appear out of like a portal in the middle of the room. And how they do it is they visualize the place they want to go, and the amplifier helps them create a window into that place right in front of them. It also creates an opening back in the other direction as well. Depictions of Shambhala. Some homes had clear outer walls, others looked like wood Tibetan style, and all were nestled unobtrusively into the landscape. All of the plants and objects seemed to glow within. The temperature of their environment is controlled with their fields. Force fields and thought amplifiers. The houses were created by a force field. They don't use wood or metals any longer. They create whatever they want with the fields. Water manifests right out of the water vapor in the air, and the fields power everything else they need. The clothing doesn't have stitching and is light. Everything they have is a created energy field. Once created, these fields last for as long as the energy is not disrupted by negativity of some kind. Food can also be created, but they found food is best grown by individuals in a natural process. Food plants respond to our energy and give it back. They don't have to eat very much food to stay vibrant, and most people in the temples don't eat at all. Shambhala Culture Thousands of people live there, and it is a very big place. It's easier to raise your energy there than in outer cultures because everyone is giving energy to everyone else and setting a field for a higher cultural level. They don't have doctors because they no longer have illnesses. You might recall from previous chapters what causes illness, from food, thoughts, medicine. They've learned how to keep their energy above that level. And people help others monitor themselves and extend their energy and keep it that way. Reproduction is a very deliberate and intentional act, and they have evolved to where they no longer use money. They no longer manufacture or build items like in the outer cultures because they could just manifest anything from their mind. What are the temples? They are the heart of Shambhala, the mystical place you imagined. It's where the real work of Shambhala is done. The people at the temples can see what is happening in the outer cultures, but they can't travel there. The power units. Each house has a black metallic box called the power unit. It helps heat and cool the house and set the force fields. The power unit by the house doesn't create anything by itself. All it does is amplify the prayer field you know about to a higher level so that we can then manifest what we need directly. The amplifiers are powered by free energy. And somewhere in the chapter, Ani mentions that the way our culture is, it has to do with manipulating iron ore and other physical materials and their culture they simply just amplify everything with their thoughts it's thought amplification the free energy devices led to spiritual evolution they discovered a device using processes that are similar to cold fusion it created virtually free energy for the culture which liberated them from spoiling the environment and enabled them to automate their mass production of goods Gradually, all of their time became focused on their spiritual paths, on synchronistic perception, and on discovering new truths about our existence and providing this information to others. And that's exactly the ninth insight and the tenth insight. As they developed spiritually in Shambhala, they began to understand that human purpose on this planet was to evolve a culture that is spiritual in all its aspects. And then they realized that they had a greater power within to help accomplish what needed to be done. 
They learn the prayer extensions and use them to further evolve the technology. Now they live in nature, and the only technology that remains are the units that help them mentally create everything else they need. History of Technology The true destiny of technology was to be used to develop our mental and spiritual abilities. On page 143, Ani describes the purpose of technological progress was to enhance humans' ability to act and be comfortable in the world as well as reach more places and connect with more people, and she goes through the history of it from the wheel to the airplane. In Shambhala, they evolved technology to consciously serve the development of the human mind. They realized the true potential of our prayer fields and began to recraft their technology to merely amplify their fields. In the rings, they are close to being able to turn off the amplification devices and just use their prayer fields to manifest everything. At the temples, they have already turned them off. Evil uses of the technology in the past to control others, subvert the use of the amplification machines by trying to use them to monitor and control other people's thoughts, surveillance, embedded chips, brainwave scans. Mental teleportation. People travel by projecting themselves mentally through a travel field. The amplification device allows them to do that. They found that the same electromagnetic field that sends television pictures can be used to actually link the space of a remote location to the space where they are. When they do that, they simply look at a scene wherever they want or actually walk through to the other site using the amplified prayer field. It works somewhat like how wormhole theory works. Vanishing pregnancies. Some people are pregnant and then are suddenly not pregnant without a miscarriage. Sometimes parallel pregnancies occur and the child goes somewhere else. Legends that predict the transition, the fourth extension. The legends say that as the outer cultures begin to understand all of the steps to extending the human prayer field, how to connect with the divine energy and let it flow out with love, how to set your field to bring on the synchronistic process and uplift others, and how to anchor the strong field with detachment, then the rest of what we do here in Shambhala will become known. It's time for the world to know what human beings are capable of, where evolution is taking us. Once you grasp it fully, you will be able to extend your field even more and grow even stronger. Shambhala has moved many times. Atlantis, Meru, all existed in the past when the early evolution of Shambhala was working itself out. The fourth extension. When an extension is completed, one's energy reaches out farther and becomes stronger. This occurs because when you send your energy out to bring in synchronistic experiences and uplift others, and when you anchor this energy with detachment and faith, you are promoting the divine plan, and the more you can act and think in harmony with the divine, the stronger your power gets. There is a built-in safety device. God is not going to turn up the power in you unless you are on the same page with universal intention. To get there, we have to get clearer about where humanity is supposed to go, how overall human culture must evolve. You must really grasp the intended future of humanity. Steps to take to realize the fourth extension. Mastering technology and placing it in the service of our inner spiritual evolution. Experiencing this extends your energy out farther because you can now set this expectation into your prayer field. You extend your field another step when you not only visualize your field uplifting the people around you into higher intuitions, but do it with the certainty of where everyone's higher intuitions, yours and theirs, are leading toward an ideal spiritual culture like the one you see here in Shambhala. When you do this, it helps them find their part to play in this evolution. Shambhala has not only mastered technology, they have also restructured their world to focus entirely on spiritual evolution, on the mysteries of existence, on the life process itself.